Wacom has one of the best drawing tablets in the market and when you talk about digital drawing, you're bound to get one someday. For the record, this isn't a sponsored video, so A, I'm here to review the Wacom Intuos that I just bought recently and B, I'm gonna find out if it's worth the money spent. First of all, the Wacom Intuos comes in two sizes, small and medium. What's the difference, you may ask? Well, the small one is smaller than the medium one. Besides being half the price cheaper than the medium one, the small one is really small. So some people prefer the medium one because of their drawing habits on bigger space. And what I have here is the model that comes with the Bluetooth. It feels kind of small and it's really light. When I took it out of the box, it almost slipped right out of my fingers. Jeez. Installing the software and drivers was a piece of cake. I installed them both on my MacBook here and my PC. The Intos comes with three additional software, but I only installed one of them, the Clip Studio Paint. Coral Draw? Nah, I kinda prefer my Adobe Suite. Wacom doesn't mention this, but the Clip Studio Paint license that comes bundled with the Intos only lasts you up to two years. And what happens after that? I don't know, maybe I'll find out when the time comes. Two years is probably a good return of investment anyway. So right off the bat, the Intuos has four buttons or shortcut keys on the top that you can map to any keyboard shortcuts you desire. But seriously Wacom, why would you place them at the top? Do you know it's such a tedious chore to extend the arm over just to press them while we're drawing? Who even approved this design? The small tablet fits my desk pretty well. Since this is the Bluetooth version, I can use it for both my Mac and for my desktop. The tablet has a work area of 15.2 times 9.5 cm or 6.0 times 3.7 inch. On the back side of it, there's like four tiny rubbery feet, so the tablet does not slide on the table. Plus points for that. The battery on the Bluetooth model charges when you plug it in using the USB cable. Okay, so then comes the drawing experience. I had many questions since this is the first time I'm using it. For example, what does the pen feel like when you're drawing on the tablet? Does it give you the paperish feel? How does it compare to the iPad drawing or traditional sketchbooks? Well, drawing with the tablet is indeed fun. At the very beginning, and if you're totally new to it, you might want to practice for a couple of days or weeks. I myself found it totally uncomfortable at the start, and it made my drawings look like a 4 year old, I kid you not. The surface of the tablet has a matte finish on it, which is pleasant while you rest your palm on it. The pressure of the pen seems just about right. It's got 496 pressure levels of sensitivity, and even though lots of tablets in the market are probably offering 8K pressure levels, this 4K one doesn't feel anything less than that. The pen is really light. I'm kinda worried every time I place it down because it can roll off so easily. There's no stand or holder, so you gotta be careful with that. Fun tip, some people may love the two buttons on the pen, but I personally find it distracting, and sometimes when I draw it gets in the way. Personal preference I know, don't take my word for it. You can, however, program those two buttons which you can use to scroll. Another nice feature which I previously covered, the extra tips or nips or… Anyway, if you need to replace one, you just need to unscrew the end of the pen and voila, there you have them. So another thing I noticed is that you gotta give yourself a bit of time to get used to looking at the screen while your hand is moving on the tablet. Some people place it in front of them to get a better feel or closer to the eyes on paper, but I place it on the right side like where my mouse is because I gotta train that hand coordination. I also practice using the pen as a mouse while I'm drawing. Make sure you've installed the drivers properly. There are many people who didn't do so and for some reason Windows always gives me the error that the tablet driver isn't responding blah 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 and I need to restart. Who knows what other errors there might be, so get your drivers and updates properly done guys. As I mentioned at the start, this isn't a sponsored video, so I bought a tablet within my budget range that I felt suits me the best. Lots of people recommend the medium sized one because you probably have more real estate to move with, but I'm pretty comfortable with the small one. Also, the Bluetooth model costs about 20 bucks more but I say it's a worthy price. I move around a lot and having a Bluetooth tablet saves me the hassle from using cables aside from being able to connect to my MacBook quick and easy. So to round things up, I find this tablet pretty good and fun to use for my illustrations and animations. 
I use it on Adobe softwares like Animate, Illustrator, Photoshop, and yeah, the occasional Clip Studio Paint. I'm sure you'll be able to use it with pretty much any software that you have for drawing or animation. So there you have it. If you're looking to dabble in digital drawing, I'd say this is really good for an entry-level drawing tablet. Small or medium, Bluetooth or not, it's totally up to you whichever fits your needs and budgets. If you have any comments or questions, do let me know in the comments section down below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.